Welcome to a lesson on the law of cosines. In this lesson, we will derive the law of cosines and also solve triangles using the law of cosines. A triangle that is not a right triangle is called an oblique triangle. Until now, we have only been able to solve right triangles. However, the law of cosines will allow us to solve oblique triangles and solve new application problems. However, in order to apply the law of cosines, we must be given either side angle side meaning two sides and an included angle are known, or side, 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 meaning all three sides are known. Oblique triangles with the following information can be solved using the law of sines. Side, angle, angle, or angle, side, angle, as well as side, side, angle. And now let's take a look at the law of cosines. For any triangle with angles, capital A, B, and C, and sides lowercase a, b, and c, the law of cosines can be expressed in any three of these ways. And there are some patterns here in the equations that should make them easier to remember. Looking at the right side, whatever angle is used in the cosine function, the opposite side is used on the left side of the equation. And now focusing on the right side of the equation, notice if we have b squared plus c squared, we have b times c here. If we have a squared plus c squared, we have a times c here. And if we have a squared plus b squared, we have a times b here. Recognizing these patterns should make it easier to remember the law of cosines. And now let's derive the law of cosines. Beginning with an oblique triangle ABC, we construct an altitude from let's say vertex C, which forms a right triangle on the left and on the right. Where if we label the leg of the right triangle on the right side, X, since the length of side AB is C, the leg in the other right triangle, the right triangle on the left would have to be C minus X, which is already labeled here. And now to begin our proof, we focus on the right triangle on the left and apply the Pythagorean theorem, which gives us B squared equals Y squared plus the quantity C minus X squared, which is here in the proof. The next step is to expand the square of c minus x, which gives us c squared minus 2cx plus x squared. And now for the next step, we apply the Pythagorean theorem to the right triangle on the right side, which gives us a squared equals x squared plus y squared, shown here on the right. And notice how our equation does have y squared plus x squared. So now we substitute a squared for x squared plus y squared, which gives us the third equation, we now know b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2cx. And now using the triangle on the right again, notice the cosine of angle b is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which gives us cosine b equals x divided by a. If we multiply both sides by a, we have x equals a cosine b. So now we perform a substitution for x. We substitute a cosine b for x which gives us the fourth line. And now simplifying, we have b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac times cosine b, which is one of the forms of the law of cosines. And using a similar process, we could derive the other two forms of the law of cosines. Now that we have the law of cosines, let's look at some examples. We're asked to solve triangle ABC if angle B is 73.1 degrees, side A is 24.2 feet, and side C is 43.7 feet. Let's label the information on the triangle. Notice how we do have side angle side, and therefore we can use the law of cosines. And because we have angle B, we know we can find the length of side B using the second form of the law of cosines. This is why it's important to remember that whatever angle we use on the right side, the opposite side is on the left side of the equation which means b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared, which is 24.2 squared plus 43.7 squared minus two times a times c times cosine b gives us minus two times 24.2 times 43.7 times cosine of 73.1 degrees. And now we need to grow the calculator. The first thing to do is make sure we are in degree mode by pressing the mode key. And notice in the third row, 
we are in degree mode. So going back to the home screen, we now enter the right side of the equation. And press enter. And this is a value of b squared. So this is a value of b squared. Let's round this to four decimal places. But then we'll also store it in the calculator so we can have the exact value. So we have 1,880.4716 to four decimal places. And now to find b, we take the square root of both sides of the equation and go back to the calculator. But if we take the square root of a rounded value, we'll have more of an error. So let's go ahead and store this by pressing store. Let's store it in b by pressing alpha apps enter. And now we'll take the square root of b to get a more exact value. So we press second x squared alpha apps and enter. This will be more accurate than taking the square root of 1880.4716, even though if we round the result to one decimal place, in both cases we get b is approximately 43.4 feet. Let's go ahead and label this. And now that we have an angle in the length of the opposite side, we can use the law of sines to determine the measure of angle A or the measure of angle C. Let's use the law of sines and determine the measure of angle A. Using the law of sines, we have the sine of angle A divided by the length of the opposite side, which is 24.2, must equal the sine of the known angle, which is the sine of 73.1 degrees, divided by the length of the opposite side, which is approximately 43.4. And now let's cross multiply and solve for sine A, and then solve for angle A. Cross multiplying, we have 43.4 times the sine of angle A equals 24.2 times the sine of 73.1 degrees. And now we divide both sides by 43.4. Simplifying, we have the sine of angle A is equal to the quotient on the right. And now to solve for A, we take the inverse sine or arc sine of both sides of the equation, which gives us angle A is equal to the inverse sine of the quotient. And now let's go back to the calculator. And when we enter 43.4, we should use the more accurate value rounded to four decimal places or the square root of b. So we'll press second sign for inverse sign and then we need the numerator in parentheses. So we have open parenthesis 24.2 times the sine of 73.1 degrees. Close parenthesis for the sine function, close parenthesis for the numerator. And then we need to divide this by either 43.3644 or the square root of b. I'm going to use the square root of b. So second x squared alpha apps, right arrow, close parenthesis, and enter. So angle A is approximately 32.3 degrees. And now from here we know the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is equal to 180 degrees and therefore angle C is equal to 180 degrees minus the sum of 73.1 degrees and 32.3 degrees, which is 74.6 degrees. And now the triangle is solved. Let's take a look at a second example. In this example, we're given the lengths of all three sides. Let's begin by labeling each side. And now let's determine the measure of the largest angle, which in our case should be angle C, because angle C is opposite the longest side, which means we'll be using this version of the law of cosines, where angle C is on the right side of the equation. C squared is 59.3 squared equals A squared plus B squared, which is 25.4 squared plus 42.8 squared, and then minus two, times a times b times cosine c, 
which is 2 times 25.4 times 42.8 times cosine c. And now I need to solve this equation for cosine c. So let's first subtract 25.4 squared and 42.8 squared. This will give us 59.3 squared minus 25.4 squared minus 42.8 squared equals negative 2 times 25.4 times 42.8 times cosine c. And now to solve for cosine c, we divide both sides by this product. Simplifying, this quotient is equal to 1, giving us cosine c is equal to the quotient on the left. And now to solve for c, we take the inverse cosine on both sides. Simplifying on the right side, we now have angle C. Angle C is equal to the inverse cosine of this quotient. And now we go to the calculator. We enter second cosine for inverse cosine, and then we need the numerator and denominator in parentheses. So we have open parenthesis, and then the numerator. Close parenthesis, and then divided by the denominator in parentheses open parenthesis, the denominator. Close parenthesis for the inverse cosine and enter. Running to one decimal place, angle C is approximately 118.6 degrees. But let's store this exact angle in the variable C. We do this by pressing store and then alpha program for C and then enter. So again, we have C is approximately 118.6 degrees. Let's go ahead and label this on the triangle. And now because we have an angle and the length of the opposite side, we can use the law of sines to determine the measure of angle A or the measure of angle B. Let's use the law of sines and determine the measure of angle A. Using the law of sines, we have the sine of angle A divided by the length of side A, which is 25.4, must equal the sine of the known angle, which is approximately 118.6 degrees. We use the exact measure when we go to the calculator, and then divided by the length of the opposite side, which is 59.3. And now let's go ahead and cross multiply and solve for sine A. This gives us 59.3 times sine of angle A is equal to 25.4 times the sine of 118.6 degrees. And now we divide both sides by 59.3. Simplifying, we have sine A is equal to the quotient on the right. And now we take the inverse sine of both sides of the equation to solve for angle A. which gives us the measure of angle A is equal to the inverse sine of this quotient. And now going back to the calculator, we enter second sine for inverse sine, and then we need the numerator in parentheses, so we have open parenthesis, 25.4 times the sine. Now we don't want to use 118.6, we could use this value here to four decimal places, but because we have the exact value in C, we will press alpha program for C, close parenthesis for the sine function, close parenthesis for the numerator, and then this is divided by 59.3, close parenthesis, and enter. Angle A is approximately 22.1 degrees. And now we can find the measure of angle B because we know the sum of the interior angles must be 180 degrees. And therefore angle B must be equal to 180 degrees minus the sum of 22.1 degrees and 118.6 degrees. Actually this is an approximation because these are rounded values. Which gives us 39.3 degrees for the measure of angle B. And now the triangle is solved. I hope you found this helpful.